With just the flick of a switch, the world looks brighter, bigger and better. Electricity keeps people, communities and our country connected. Electricity has great power. However, it's not without its potential dangers in emergency situations. As emergency personnel, your first instinct is to rush in, lend a hand and save lives. But if you're not careful, the wrong move could cost you and your crew their lives. This video is designed to prepare you with the knowledge and skills you need to safely navigate emergency situations involving electricity. We'll explore some of the most common scenarios you're likely to encounter on the job and advise you of the correct processes and protocols to follow in these situations. This information will then empower you to perform your duties safely. We're all accustomed to the sight of power lines and most people have a basic understanding that electricity can be a serious hazard, whether above or below ground. However, in times of crisis, it can be easy to overlook the danger associated with electricity with potentially devastating consequences. Here we're at the scene of a motor vehicle accident. As you can see, this car has collided with a pole. The victims are injured and need help. Stop. It's natural to want to approach the vehicle and start assisting those injured. However, since the car has hit a power pole, any fallen wire should always be treated as live and dangerous. Energised and de-energised power lines both look the same. Do not approach. Stay at least eight metres away. That's roughly two ambulances in length. While your first instinct may be to move towards the vehicle, similarly, the natural instinct of the victims will be to try to get out. Both are potentially dangerous. Anybody trying to approach or exit the vehicle is at risk of receiving an electric shock as a result of the fallen power lines. I need you to stay in the vehicle. The power lines are down on the car and they're live. It's very dangerous to exit. What you can't see is that the ground has become energised, just like the car. This presents a new danger called step potential. This is best described as the energy flowing outward from the point of origin, like ripples on a pond. Every time a person takes a step closer to the point of origin, they are stepping into a different level of voltage with each step. As a result of this change in voltage, the electric current can pass through a person's body, causing serious injury or death. This presents a dangerous situation for both the victim and the responders. The proper course of action is to stay at least eight metres from the accident site and any fallen power lines. Where possible, create an exclusion zone around the site and keep bystanders away. Call your communications centre and provide them with the location and details of the incident. They will then contact the local electricity distributor. If the situation is dire and a person must exit or approach the vehicle before the all clear is given, they must not touch any metal parts of the car, like doors. Instruct them not to run or walk, they must shuffle away from the car. But remember, if the situation isn't life-threatening, always wait for an electrical distributor personnel to attend and confirm the site is safe before approaching the incident location. Perform a visual risk assessment to ensure there are no other electrical hazards and their associated risks present. Be alert to potential hazards. Power lines can recoil at any time. The final steps of testing involves earthing and short-circuiting the line. This must be completed by authorised electrical distributor personnel on site. While these steps can take time, it is imperative to ensure the safety of everyone involved. After these steps are completed and the electricity distributor personnel on the ground is given the all clear, proceed with the rescue efforts. Remember, always keep at least eight metres away. Contact your control centre and ask for assistance from the local electrical distributor. Wait for the electrical distributor to confirm it's safe before proceeding with rescue efforts. Now let's look at another scenario that you are likely to encounter. Fire. Whether it's a property fire, like a house fire, or a bushfire, 
the heat from the flames can damage electrical infrastructure and bring down power lines. Big or small, extreme caution must be taken when approaching a fire site. In the case of a property fire, the proper course of action is to turn off the power supply at the main switch. Keep in mind there may be more than one main switch. Illegal wiring can sometimes be present that isn't controlled by the main switch, leaving power energised to the property. In rare circumstances, generators are used to supply properties with power, so be aware of this. Perform a hazard and risk assessment to identify any potential hazards and look at the controls required to reduce the risk they present. SA31 to 31 Fire Attack Team. 31 Fire Attack Team replying. SA31 confirming the main switch is turned off in the switchboard, over. Yes, sir, received that. Main switch has been turned off in switchboard, over. Just because the main power switch is off does not mean the site is electrically safe. There is still a possibility of an explosion or electric shock. This is because the conductors are still live between the supply point and the switchboard. Additional risks may exist if the property has embedded generation from solar systems. Check the property to see if solar is present, as these systems will continue generating electricity. While tending to the fire is an urgent matter, it's imperative to follow these additional safety guidelines. Never park vehicles under or close to power lines. Keep any hydraulic equipment away from overhead power lines. Be aware of illegal wiring not controlled by the main switch. Be aware of alternative energy power sources which may be present, such as solar systems. Bushfires are also extremely dangerous and present their own set of challenges in and around the network. Hey, there's heaps of power lines in here, so watch your step and watch your head. It's common to find high and low voltage power lines in rural areas and bushland. These can be harder to spot and may be damaged following a bushfire. Always assume power lines are live and refer to the pre-incident fire plans to identify the likely location of overhead power lines. Hey guys, so these power lines are sagging because of the heat. Just be really careful so that there could be more of them around to so keep an eye out as we move forward. You do not want to come in contact with a sagging power line. If you see one, that's a clear sign that electrical infrastructure is damaged. Stay eight metres away. Hold up guys, there's a wire on the ground there. Always need to treat them as they're alive. Firecom Middleton 7, we got power lines down at our location, over. The appropriate course of action in a bushfire is to contact your control centre and alert them of the fallen power lines. Stay eight metres away from fallen or sagging lines and set up an exclusion zone to keep others away. Always assume all power lines are live and never stand under them. Be aware that damaged or fallen power lines may recoil. Fences and water pipes also pose a danger when fighting a bushfire. Firecom Middleton 7, we've got power lines down across the fence. We're unsure if they're live. We're standing by, cannot pass at this time. Over. When a power line makes contact with a structure, like a fence, the fence can be energised and conduct electricity for long distances. In no circumstances should you approach or touch the fence. Also, it's important to know that severe flames and dense smoke can cause power lines to arc to earth. This can cause what is known as a plasma burst, followed by an explosion. Steer clear of power lines in areas of smoke and fire. In addition to sagging power lines, wooden power poles and cross arms are also vulnerable to catching fire, particularly during bushfire season. It doesn't take long for the wood to succumb to the flames. In order to safely extinguish the fire, you should park all vehicles at a safe distance, stand back and keep others at least eight metres away. Use vehicle mounted pumps and pulse the stream above the pole. Do not spray water directly onto the cross arm, as water is a conductor of electricity. Use a nozzle that breaks the water stream by 50% and allows overspray water to put out the fire. Never stand in puddles of water. If power is not isolated to the pole, 
the pole may reignite, so use caution. It's also important to be aware of copper chrome arsenic poles, or CCA poles. These are identifiable by their green colour. When damaged, CCA poles present a potential cancer risk, so they must be wrapped to allow for safe handling, and personnel must wear the correct PPE for the task. Fire can also strike a substation. When this happens, there's a risk of toxic fumes being released from the burning of insulation, and equipment is often filled with oil. Extreme caution should be taken when attending any incidents at a substation or any other electricity facility. Never enter a substation without an electrical distributor personnel present, as they know what additional risks are inside, including chemicals and other hazardous materials. During wild weather, fallen trees and flying debris can take down electrical equipment and power lines. You are responding to events on the electricity network that prevent it operating as normal. As such, extra dangers may be present. Watch out, Dave. Looks like we've got a down power line. I'll have to treat it as live and stay eight metres away. Storm-related damages present a wide range of potential hazards. As previously mentioned, you should always assume fallen power lines are live and take the appropriate course of action before proceeding to work in the area. When working in the aftermath of a storm, the appropriate course of action is to contact the local electricity distributor to isolate the power. Set up an exclusion zone where possible to keep bystanders and emergency personnel eight metres from live wires. Be alert to any potential electrical hazards at the location. Never touch any power lines, associated hardware or solar panels. Approval will never be given over the phone. Wait for the all clear from electricity personnel on site before proceeding with any required cleanup. In this scenario, power lines have broken and fallen on top of this car, with the driver still inside. Like we saw earlier, you should always stay eight metres clear and wait for the local electrical distributor to arrive and clear the site. However, in this scenario, another serious danger is present as a fire has broken out. The power lines must still be treated as live. So in this life-threatening situation, the driver should be instructed to slowly move clear at least eight metres from the power lines. Always check that there is no threat of more damage by moving the vehicle and ensure all bystanders are well clear of adjacent power lines. Remember though, this should only be done if there is a life-threatening situation. Otherwise, wait until the electrical distributor arrives and clears the site. We can't look at weather-related events without including floods. Heavy rain and rising water put electrical systems at risk of potential damage. When performing rescue-based work in a flood situation, use caution when working with aluminium rescue boats as they provide a potential risk of electric shock. If you're operating upstream, maintain at least 250 metres from power lines in case of a motor failure. If you're downstream, maintain at least 8 metres distance. Network operators may not isolate electricity until floods reach 1 metre from the overhead wiring. This is to ensure that the electrical supply is maintained to communities in times of disaster. Always assume power lines are live, even if they're underwater. Remember that the clearance between power lines is reduced during flooding. Proceed with caution and always stay the required safe distance away. As mentioned earlier, if a property has solar power or a battery energy storage system, these will still energise the structures they feed. Snow can also have an impact on the electrical infrastructure. Heavy snow can reduce clearances underneath power lines so always exercise caution during snowy conditions. Always look up and observe the impact snow might be having on the power lines. Our railway network transports millions of Australians each day. If there is a mechanical failure or other type of emergency, care must be exercised when navigating these high voltage areas. If called to attend an emergency within the rail corridor, 
overhead railway electrical infrastructure should be treated the same as other electrical power lines and assumed to be live. Contact your control centre, who will in turn contact the rail operations centre. If the emergency is non-life-threatening, you will need to wait for a representative from the rail operations centre to allow entrance and escort you through the rail corridor. If you are facing a life or death situation involving the overhead wiring, the railways have a special procedure called a rescue power outage that can be introduced if you are required to urgently rescue members of the public. In this circumstance, advise your control centre that the situation is life-threatening and priority arrangements will be made to remove all sources of power to the overhead wiring. Due to their size, transmission towers can often be visited by illegal thrill-seekers, demonstrators, or those seeking to potentially self-harm. Contact your control centre and ask for assistance from the local electrical distributor. They will be able to assist with ensuring the person is able to come down safely without coming into contact with electrical equipment and or supply. Substations are located in rural and suburban areas. These sometimes attract vandals or others looking to cause damage. Unfortunately for them, getting caught trespassing is the least of their problems. Stop! Don't move! You're in a high voltage area which is extremely dangerous. We're here to help you. Intruders are likely to be scared and have an impulse to want to run off. Maintain a safe distance and do not approach them as this may put yours and their lives at risk. Instead, contact the local electricity distributor and tell them your location and the current situation. Wollongong 40, we're at the substation on Country Road. We have an unauthorised person on the premises and we need the assistance of the electricity distributor. Stay calm, be firm and reassuring. Wait for the electrical distributor to arrive and provide a safe exit. Due to their perceived high value, thieves can try to cut and steal copper electrical cabling and equipment. They often do not realise that these are still live and potentially deadly if handled incorrectly or cut. If called to respond to this type of incident, do not approach. In the case of an injury or fatality, do not touch the body. Remain eight metres clear and wait for electrical personnel to arrive and perform all their required testing and checks to ensure the area is safe. Finally, it's important to remember that there are all types of equipment that distribute electricity across the community. They are located in every suburb. Regardless of whether the equipment is of high voltage or of low voltage, it can be extremely dangerous when involved in an incident. Here you'll see a truck has come into contact with the overhead service cable connecting the adjacent house to the network. Hi, I've made contact with electricity wires. They're still touching. I'm not sure what the damage is or what to do. It is important to always treat situations like this as potentially life-threatening. Reviewing the situation in a methodical way to ensure the truck can be removed safely in a controlled way. The electricity network uses a range of different cables. Even if you suspect a cable to be a communications cable, do not touch or move it it may have come into contact with high or low voltage lines. Stay eight metres away, call your control centre and ask for assistance from the local electricity distributor. Wait for an electricity distributor personnel to attend and give the required all clear. Again, remember the core principles to appropriate action. Stay eight metres away and keep others away also. Contact your control centre perform a risk assessment and wait for the required all clear before entering the scene. The Australian Electricity Network is among the safest and most reliable in the world. However, incidents can see a range of potential hazards and dangerous situations occur on the network. By watching this video, you have raised your awareness and understanding of the many electrical hazards you are likely to face in emergency situations. You now have the tools and information you need to make safe and effective decisions. Thanks for watching, stay safe, 
And for more information, contact your local electrical authority.